Welcome to KeynoteChemistry.com, where we show you how to use Keynote and presentation software to make dynamic, movement-rich presentations. And when I think of movement-rich presentations, I mean where things are changing size, um, where animations are happening on the screen, and I try to avoid complicated approaches because I don't have time. I do everything with Magic Move on Keynote or um, with the Morph uh, transition that now exists in PowerPoint. Um, today I'm using Keynote and I'm going to show you how I made my Rule of 13 video which uh, is uh, linked to in this post. First I put everything into Keynote. So look at this element here. I just created that in Illustrator and just pasted it in. And this element here will be manipulated on its own and that's just been pasted in. Sometimes elements like this block down here I pasted as separate things because they're each going to be manipulated separately by Magic Move later on, so I left that uh, as two separate elements. Um, I put these annotations in as well. I made them in um, uh, Illustrator and I pasted them in, copied and pasted from Illustrator. I recommend you do everything in a graphic editing program and then paste them all in as PDF elements because Keynote um, wants to use its own fonts and its own way of doing things. Uh, I find it's just easier if you want everything to resize nicely to paste everything in as a PDF element from say Illustrator or some other graphic program. One thing to note is in this element right here, the first element I'm going to show you is I have the annotation separately because I'm going to bring it in separately in the subsequent um, example. So first we'll just get everything back to where it was. There we go. Um, now, if you're going to use Magic Move, set up everything in advance. I have put all my elements here um, in advance. I've placed them all exactly where I want them to be. And then I'm going to copy. I'm just going to go up to this one up here and I'm going to just say duplicate it. There you go. And you know what? Duplicate it lots of times. I find if I don't duplicate it a lot of times, then I get down to the bottom one and I'm manipulating it and I lose the original. Always keep the original. Always keep the one at the end, never change it. If you just that, that way you always have something to duplicate that was the original. That's my advice. And no matter what you're doing, how complicated things get above, always just have your original down below. You can delete it at the end of the presentation once you've got everything right. But if you ever want to go back up and undo something or fix something, it's better to copy the original if you're using Magic Move. Because Magic Move requires that uh, it that it knows something is the same on both slides. And the easiest way to do that is through copying. Um, in the first animation that you see in the video of my rule of 13, um, this element right here uh, expands and dominates the page while all the other elements fade away. How did I do that? Uh, well, I just go to the next slide and I delete all the elements that are going to fade away. Boom, gone. Boom, gone. Boom, gone. Now, what happens in a transition between a slide that has all the elements and a slide where the elements are gone? I'll show you, they just fade away. I mean, if they don't exist on the next slide, they don't exist on the next slide. That's all there is to that. Um, now, I want to take this element, I'm going to resize it. And I want to resize both elements, both the annotation and the element. So to do that, I'm going to group it. I'm going to go to um, Arrange and group the elements. That way I can resize them and they'll both resize evenly. So let's say I did that. And there it is. And then I'm going to ungroup it because I want to get everything back. Um, and I want to, after the transition, I don't want the annotation to uh, appear. I want it to sort of not move. I want it to just kind of fade in. So I'm going to do a transition here. I'm going to go to animate. I'm going to just have it uh, dissolve in. That, that's what we'll do there. We'll just have it dissolve in. Now, um, I didn't want any annotations to show up on this initial slide, so I'm just going to go and delete all the annotations. So all the blue ink is gone. Now, when I go between the two slides, uh, what you'll see is this graphic element resize, and that blue ink will just kind of fade in because it didn't exist in the first slide. Here we go. But it does exist on this slide. Um, so it's going to fade in um, because of that. And uh, I've actually built a transition into this where uh, when it arrives, um, it only fades in when I hit the spacebar. So uh, if you look at this element here on this page here, 
you'll see that under build in, it dissolves in. I put that in there just a few minutes ago, right? Um, and then when it fades out again, or sorry, when we build out, I'm going to go to the next slide down, the third slide. And look, everything's back to its original size. And I'm going to get rid of all the uh, uh, annotations on this slide too, um, so that it'll just fade back in and look like that original first slide. There, so I just took a minute and got rid of all those annotations. Now compare the first slide. It has no annotation here. The third slide has this annotation there. The transition between the two was to zoom in, fade in the annotation, and then zoom back out. And you'll see, if you watch my presentation, you'll see that basically every, as each element zooms in and becomes the star of the show, the annotations arrive, and when they zoom out, I keep them. And the way to do that is basically, if I go to this fourth one, which I haven't changed, um, I will you know, only delete the annotations that I want to disappear. I'll keep the ones I want to keep, but they're always there. If, if I sort of say, oh no, I've deleted too many annotations, remember, keep that last one there, this last one here. Always keep it around, always duplicating it. I'll just duplicate it again a couple of times just for good measure. I'm paranoid that I might actually alter it. Just keep a, um, one last slide that has everything on it. And that way, if you've ever found yourself um, changing things that you didn't want to change, you can always bring them back in and it's always a copy of the original. Um, it's got to be a copy if Magic Move is going to work. Um, sometimes cutting and pasting elements, it will recognize them as the same element, sometimes not, but if you cut, if you copy, it always recognizes it. So let's just look at the first transition that you see in the video um, of my uh, lecture. Um, I'm just going to press play now. So imagine I'm presenting, I talk about the rule of 13 a bit, and now I want to talk about this first element here. I hit my space bar, and what do you see? You see it zoom in and Magic Move handed that size change. All I did to make that transition happen was just say, this element here is gonna be a different size on the next slide, Magic Move, you handle it. And then of course I have the transition for fading in the other element. And then when I wanna go back to the uh, sort of my, my canvas again, what I do is I just go to the next slide. And on the next slide, this picture is in its original size and I keep the annotation. See, that doesn't go anywhere and there's the rest of the presentation ready to go, ready to zoom in on the next element, add annotations and go forward. And you can see that kind of performance as you, if you watch the original video, which is also linked. Um, so that's how I use Magic Move with Keynote. So Magic Move is pretty easy. It's pretty much the only transition I use. Magic Move that and fade something in and then Magic Move it all back. That's pretty much how my videos work. Um, as we move through, uh, my exercises in Keynote, you'll see um, how I built some more complicated uh, animations within slides, and they were all done using Magic Move. So do come back, um, check every week. I'll have new content uh, explaining how I use Keynote to create what, what I think are um, very effective animations, but also with only using this one transition over and over again, which keeps things simple for me and hopefully you'll find it simple for you. So thank you for coming to KeynoteChemistry.com and I hope you learned something. Um, please comment and let me know uh, uh, any advice you have because I'm still learning. All right, thank you, good luck.